morning, boys and girls. My name is Johnny, and I am your host today. Mr. Zorik asked me to cover for him, and I am so excited to be here. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program. And if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day with us. And our song of the day is, God is for me. Let's sing it together. And I'm going to call my friend Paul to sing it with us. Thank you for singing the song with me, Paul. You're welcome. I love singing this song here at Kids Connection. Yes, yes, me too. Now, Paul, in boys and girls, I'm going to invite you to please bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this Kids Connection program. We invite you to be with us today. Be with all the boys and girls, moms, dads, uncles, grandmas, grandpas. We ask that you keep everyone safe at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Paul. Yes, Johnny. Do you know what a dormitory is? Dormy what? Dormitory. No, I don't know. Boys and girls, do you know what a dormitory is? Well, a dormitory is a place where kids sleep in a school or a facility. So our mission story today, it comes from a girl. It's a story about a girl named Anchao and she lives in a dormitory in school. She is learning a lot more than just her school work. Let's watch our missionary story today.
when Anshal was eight, she left her small village and arrived at Varanasi Seventh Day Adventist School. She had no friends, she didn't respect the teachers, and she knew nothing about Jesus. Anshal moved into the dormitory and quickly began making friends. The dorm is a social place where students play games, relax, and do schoolwork. Many of the students spend time reading their Bibles. This was a totally different world to Anshal's previous life in the village, but she found herself enjoying Bible studies and trying to get good grades. Eventually, Anshal gave her heart to Jesus and is so grateful for her experience at the school. Really, God has blessed me so much that I learn so many stories and so many um, activities in this church, and I like them so much. And I, my favorite story is um, Job. Like Anshel, many students come to this school knowing nothing about Jesus, but their lives are transformed. They are immersed in a holistic learning experience. In addition to the standard subjects, Students learn about health, engage in fun activities, and enjoy delicious meals. Each Sabbath, students attend the Adventist House of Prayer, located right on campus. They often participate in the Sabbath program. Anshel and her friends love to sing for the congregation. We are having these children from the village area and they are learning Jesus and they know that this is all blessing coming in the name of Jesus to them and to their families. So that's how the message of love and Jesus is going to the rural area from this small school. God has blessed this school with more and more students each year, but unfortunately the dormitories are over full. The girls are crammed into a small space with bunk beds piled up against each other. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help expand the girls' dormitory, allowing more girls to attend school. Present, we have only one room and we have 25 girls here. But then when the dorms are there, we will have around 60 girls in the dormitories. We will have just the double or triple of the girls studying in this. In this way, we'll be educating more students in our school. Please pray for Varanasi Seventh-day Adventist School. Pray that the teachers and students can continue to be a positive light for each other, like they were to Anshal. Please consider what you can do to help the girls at this school. Thank you for supporting projects such as this. Thank you for supporting Mission Offering. Well, Johnny, I didn't know that kids sleep in the school. Yes, yes, Paul. Kids sleep there and they learn about Jesus. But we can help them with our offerings. So boys and girls, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the donation just above and donate to the missionaries. You can also donate to our program Kids Connection. I will do that, Johnny. Yes. Me too, Paul. Where is Mr. Zorik? Oh, he couldn't be here today, so he asked me to cover. And I am so happy to be here today. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yes, yes, so excited. You know, Johnny, I'm excited too. Well, thanks for joining me, Paul. By the way, how was your week? My week was fun. You know, I heard a story from a friend of mine at school. His name is Peter. Oh, yes, yes. I know Peter. Yeah, you know what Peter said? What? Peter said that he went camping. Whoa, I love camping. What did he do? Well, he went camping and he climbed the tree. And he said that the tree was so high, he could almost touch the sky. Wow, oh, that is a tall tree. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't all. Really? He said that he jumped from the top of the tree and he jumped inside of the lake and he didn't get hurt. 
Wow! That is fun! Yeah, but I'm not sure if he's saying the truth. It's probably true! You know, that adventure is nothing compared to what happened with me! Really? Yes, really! So, let me tell you my story! And you're gonna tell me if this is exciting! Mm, okay, what happened to you, Johnny? Well, Paul, see, I went to the zoo! You know, LA Zoo! Have you kids gone to LA Zoo? Have you gone to LA Zoo, Paul? Yes, I've been there. Well, me too! But here is where my adventure starts! Mmm, tell me. Well, after seeing all the animals, I saw the giraffe, the chimps, the monkeys, the gorillas, I saw the tiger! What, Johnny? I got to the lion cage! Oh yes, I know where the lion cage is. Yes, but let me tell you what happened. When I got there, I saw people running, running and screaming for their lives, and they were all running. Ah! 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 And I rushed to see what was going on. Do you know what happened? No, I don't know. Tell me, Johnny. The lion got out of his exhibit. What? Yes, yes, Paul. The lion got out and the lion was chasing everyone. But do you know what, Paul? I was there and I was able to chase the lion and the lion was, was running from me and the lion was running from one side to the other and I was chasing the lion like a lion hunter and I was chasing and jumping over rocks and I was jumping over people and I said, Lion, I'm gonna get you and I'm gonna put you back on your cage and the lion saw me coming and he ran and he ran and he ran and I continued to run and I was almost and the lion was almost out of the zoo and when I finally jumped and I caught the lion by the neck whoa Johnny yes 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 I caught the lion by the neck! Hmm... Johnny... Yes, wait, 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 but that's not all! That's just the beginning of the adventure! When I caught him by the neck, I dragged him all the way inside where his exhibit was! I put him in there, and I closed the door! Whoa... Johnny! Wait, wait, wait! After that, everybody was asking for my autograph because I was the Lion Hunter! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Johnny? Yes, Bo? You know, I think Peter's story was kind of a lie. Really? Yes. And you know, Johnny. What, Paul? Jesus doesn't like when we lie. Well, but, but, you know, my adventure was fun because I was a lion hunter! Johnny? Yes, Paul? Are you sure your story is what really happened? Well, uh, kind of. Boys and girls, do you think that was what really happened with Johnny? Johnny? 
Jesus doesn't like when we lie. Well, Paul, you know, maybe I exaggerated a little bit. A little bit, Tony? Okay, okay. Maybe a... Uh, uh. Johnny? Yes? Why don't you tell the boys and girls what really happened? But, you know, I was the lion hunter. Johnny. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll tell the truth. You know, I got to the LA Zoo. And I got really close to the lion cage. And the lion roared so loud, so loud. And I was scared. I was scared and I was crying. I didn't want anybody to see me crying. But. Johnny, why did you say that you were the lion hunter? Because it was fun! I thought that you would like me more because the story was excited! I saw how happy you were with the story of Peter! And I wanted my story to be excited too! Wow! Johnny, you know, just because other people are telling lies, it doesn't mean that we have to lie too. Jesus wants us to have integrity. Integrity is when we stand by the truth. So, it doesn't mean that you like Peter more than me? No, Johnny. I like you because you're my friend, not because you tell lies or because you have adventures. You know, boys and girls, in the Bible today, in the story, we are going to learn of a man in the Bible who had integrity. Oh yes, yes, I heard Mr. Zorik say that today we're going to learn about Noah, and Noah was a man of integrity. That's right, Johnny. Noah was a man of integrity. And despite that all the people around him were doing bad things, he was a man of integrity. And he did the right thing, even though the ones around him didn't. Oh, that's why we are singing the song, God is for me, because even though all the people around us in this world are doing wrong things, we can always count on God to be right next to us. That's right, Johnny. How about we sing the song again, God is for me. Boys and girls, let's sing the song, God is for me again. Okay, okay, let's sing the song now.
Johnny and I loved being your host today. I also want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for watching and being a part of our program. Oh, by the way, Mr. Zoe forgot to say last week, but last week we had two birthdays. Yes, it was Natalie's birthday. So Natalie, happy birthday. It was also Ellis, happy birthday, Ellis. I love you and we all here we all love you here from Kids Connection. Parents, this afternoon it's Parents Connection on Zoom, so don't forget to log in. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Today we have our early teens classroom. Yes, early teens. And teacher James is going to be teaching the classroom this afternoon or right now for Kids Connection. So if you have a teenager brother or sister, Tell them to look for the Teens for Christ and join the classroom today. Thank you so much, Mr. James, or, uh, <coughs> well, Mr. Hearn, he also, he goes by James. I love his classroom, so join us. And kids, I am so excited to tell you something new. Well, the teachers from Kids Connection are talking, and we are going to have our first Kids Connection Live on Zoom! Yes! So put it on your calendar and join us. Zoom Live at 9 o'clock for Kids Connection. Thank you so much for joining us. Stick around to watch your teacher's classroom right now. Until next week, my name is Johnny. And the crowd goes wild. <sighs> Goodbye, kids. Goodbye. See you around. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Just kidding. This lion is our friend. He is our friend here at Kids Connection. Good lion! Rawr. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad to be able to be with you today. Let's go ahead and sing our welcome song. 
Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. We're glad to see you. We're glad to see you. This happy Sabbath day. We're glad to see you. We're glad to see you. This happy Sabbath day. Well, I'd like to welcome a few of you today. I hope you're all doing well. I know by the time I see you again, you'll be so grown up and big. I'd like to welcome Skye and Paul and Ethan and Ellis, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, Sammy and Carlina. I'd like to welcome Tyel and Aiden, Vida and Max and Caitlin, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade, Josiah, Nicholas, Federico, Francisco, and Francesca. I'd like to welcome Will and Mia, Andrea, Joshua, happy birthday. I'd like to welcome Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Elijah, Ethan, JR and Seth, Zori, and that new baby sister, Zael. I hope you're all having a good week this week. We're going to talk a little bit more about integrity today. We are talking about integrity this month, and I want to know if you see things close up, whether you can tell what they are. Now, here's a picture of something. You tell me what you think this is. It's magnified, isn't it? What do you think? Yes, it is a basketball. Now here's another one. It has some stripes on it. What do you think it is? It's a very close up picture of a butterfly's wing. Now here's one. It's kind of a different color. I bet you can tell from the color what it is. Well, yes, it's an orange. It's kind of hard to tell because they're very, very close up. They're magnified. Now this month we're talking about integrity. We're trying to magnify what integrity looks like. Now let's look at person in the Bible, his name is Noah, and we want to look at his integrity and see what we can learn from his example. Now God had created a beautiful world for people to live in. God created a beautiful garden for his people to live in. He put Adam and Eve, our first parents, in the garden, but they made bad choices and they had to leave their beautiful garden. They had children and grandchildren and people started covering the earth and they were making bad choices too. And that made God very, very sad. His creation had been so beautiful and he said that it was very, very good. But the people started being wicked and cruel to each other. And he was very, very sad that he had made them. Now there was one person, only one, who remembered God, and his name was Noah. He was the only person who remembered God on the earth. Like Enoch, Noah walked with God. Integrity, he had integrity. Do you remember what integrity is? It is doing what is right in all situations. Noah cared about God even though no one else did. Noah did not say, I want to do what people want me to do because I want them to like me. No, he knew that his purpose was to walk with God and so he did. One day God talked to Noah when Noah was out 
in the creation. He was talking to God and praying. And God said to him, Noah, nobody cares about me anymore. Nobody's making right choices. I'm going to cover the whole earth with a flood and it will destroy everything. It will all be covered with water and no one will be able to get away. I want to save you and your family. So I want you to build a big boat. I want you to bring your family in. I want you to bring as many people in as you can. And I want you to bring two of every animal in the world into that boat so that I can save them. Well, I think Noah probably was a little surprised because back in those days, there were not large bodies of water and there wasn't a lot of rain. And God said he was gonna send rain. And he's like, hmm, what's rain? Big drops of water falling out of the sky. Well, Noah did everything the way God told him to. He built the big boat just like God told him to. It took him a really long time to build the boat. And he tried to tell people about the flood that was coming. But do you know what they did? They laughed at him. They said he was crazy. He got his three sons to help him build the boat. They all came to help him. But the people that were living around him thought he was nuts. But he still did what God told him to do. And then God caused the animals to come into the boat. Now let's see what kind of animals we've got here. I've got some giraffes. Let's put Noah there. I've got some lions, some little bunnies. I've got some sheep. Let's see, where should we put the sheep? Right there. God caused all kinds of animals. Some elephants, we'll put them over there some donkeys, all kinds of animals came and they all went in to the boat. And all the people standing around were amazed. The animals all went into the boat. How did Noah get them to go into the boat? Well, he didn't. God caused them to go into the boat, didn't he? And then after all the animals went in the boat, Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives all went into the boat. Out of all the people that lived on the earth, only eight people went in the boat, but there were a lot of animals in there for them to take care of too. And also on the boat was all the food that they were going to need. So they all went in the boat and God closed the door so that no one else could go in. And then guess what happened? Nothing. For seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven whole days. They sat in the boat and nothing happened. But on the seventh day, rain started falling from the sky. The boat is sitting on dry ground. There had never been any rain. The people were confused. What is this stuff falling out of the sky? Maybe Noah was right. Well, the rain continued to fall and the boat just sat on the ground. So they started thinking that maybe he was crazy after all. So they just sat there in the boat and the water kept coming down. And then water kept coming out of the ground too. 
pretty soon the water started rising on the earth and the people started trying to get up higher to get away from the water. Then they realized that maybe Noah was not so crazy after all. So they started trying to knock on the door and say, let us come in, let us come in. But they couldn't get in. The water just kept coming up and up and up. And just as God said it would, the water soon covered the whole earth. Even the highest mountains on the earth were covered. Everything that lived and breathed on the land died. The people, the animals, even the birds, except for those that were in the boat. This was God's judgment on the earth because of the people who did not listen to God's goodness. Remember how we talked about the people of the world in Noah's time. What were they like? They were constantly sinning against God and being mean and evil to one another. They did not care about God and what was best for them. The only one who cared was Noah. Noah had integrity. He walked with God and he did what was right in every situation. How was he able to have integrity when everyone around him was bad? Noah knew that the only thing that mattered was pleasing God. God's word says, each of us will give an account of himself to God. That comes from Romans 14, verse 12. All of us will be responsible for his or her own choices on this earth. Jesus tells us in Matthew that our thoughts, the things we do, and the words we speak matter to God. We will talk to God about the ways that we honored and dishonored him. We will talk to God about the ways that we have done good things and the ways that we have done wrong things. We each have a purpose on this earth, and that is to worship and bring glory and honor to God. After a really long time, in the Bible it works out to be about two years, God made the dry ground appear again. The storm stopped after 40 days, but they had to stay in the ark because there was water all over the land, so they had to wait for the water to go down. It finally went down and the ark stopped on a mountain and all the people and animals came out. And Noah came out and his wife and his sons came out and their wives came out. And they all came out of the ark and they were so glad to be out of the ark. They were happy to be on dry ground again. So glad that they built an altar and had a sacrifice and praised God for protecting them all this time. And God put a rainbow in the sky. That was the very first rainbow. And with that rainbow, he promised that he would never flood the whole earth again. So that can never happen again. Every time you see a rainbow, you can remember God's promise. Just like in Noah's day, people think they can act or say anything they want to. And they can, but not without consequences. As mentioned earlier, we will all answer to God for our words, thoughts, and actions. God sees everything but other people notice the way we talk and act. We want to choose our words and actions very carefully. Now let's see if you remember the memory verse. It says, even a child is known by his actions. That comes from Hebrews 20 verse 11. So even though you're small and you're young, People can tell whether you love Jesus or not by the things that you say and do. Let's try the memory verse again. Even a child is known by his actions. Hebrews 20 verse 11. Let's try it one more time. Even a child 
is known by his actions. Hebrews 20, verse 11. Wow, that was a really good memory verse. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been made fun of or laughed at or ignored or felt left out? Have you ever tried to keep someone from making a bad choice or doing something that would get them into trouble? Have you ever thought about what it must have been like for Noah to build this big boat? It probably wasn't the easy thing to do, but it was right. He did exactly what God told him to do, and everybody around him made fun of him and laughed. Others pretended they didn't know him, maybe. Some may have tried to talk him out of building the boat. But no matter what others said, Noah cared about what God thought of him. Noah understood that he was responsible to God, not to those other people. And the same is true for us. I should have integrity or honesty because I want to honor God, not the people around me. There are some people in your life that might try to get you to think and act the wrong way. And you might feel like you need to give in to the pressure in order for them to like you. Just like Noah, you're responsible to God and not to others. When you try to get ready for a rainstorm, do you go out without any protection against the rain? No, you would use your umbrella. You would take along your umbrella and you would be prepared, right? Well, just like you want to be prepared for a rainstorm, you want to be prepared when other people try to get you to do the wrong thing. You should practice what you would say. And some of the things you can do to stay away from trouble is, number one, just don't get into those situations. That's an important one. You can try to stay away as much as possible from those situations. Sometimes it is hard. The second thing you can do when you feel like they're trying to get you to do what is wrong is to just walk away, to leave that situation and not stay there. God will be with you. He will give you courage to do that. And the third thing is probably the most difficult thing, and that is to say, no, that's wrong. I can't do that. Stick up for what you believe. Say something. Speak up. Having integrity matters to God. So when Noah had integrity, he brought glory and honor to God. Your next step this week is to demonstrate integrity in your life through your actions. Let's go ahead and say a little prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you've given us directions in your word how to honor you. Help us to want to be your friend. Help us to know what to do when others want us to do the wrong things. Amen. Well, I'm going to show you the craft for today. And it is a picture of Noah's Ark with some animals that I have that we can cut out and color and glue onto the ark. When you see it on the website, parents, it will look like this. There will be two sheets. One is the ark and one is the animals. So remember when you go to get it to look for two sheets. Thank you for being with me today. I hope you'll have a good week and I'll see you next Sabbath. Goodbye.